Hi everybody and Happy New Year and I'm glad to be back with you. It's been uh, a busy, busy time and Christmas is over and the New Year's here and we've got lots of exciting things to talk about in the New Year. Uh, for now, I want to uh, uh, show you how beautiful the Monet pot from the sewer pot has turned out to be. It is almost in full bloom so I can have it on the center of the table and it's beautiful from both sides and as it grows because this was just repotted this year as it grows it will become fuller and uh, happier and it'll be gorgeous. So I'm very, very pleased. And as you know, we found another one and I'm, go I'm going to be painting it and putting something in it. So uh, I think if you were to see this and in a store, because it's, what is it, all the good points, it has firm leaves, it has healthy aerial roots. These are all things we want to look for when we're out shopping for our orchids. Now, um, I would even, <laughs> I was at uh, a local flower shop. It, it was, uh, it, I had this, uh, it, well, orchid holic says a disease and I had this, <laughs> this uh, I wanted a, a new orchid, which I have to learn to control. But I wanted a new orchid and none of the grocery stores had them here. There's four grocery stores. There are two called Askews. They can't get them because their shipper changed or something. Uh, Save on, I talked to them and very understandably they said, it's just too cold even in the trucks right now to send them from the coast up. They would not survive. So this is why we like to have our orchids in our house in the winter and we can watch them as they change. And this year past, uh, we bought a few new ones. So now we have every winter to look forward to more blooms from those. So, but this one did well, even though it was just repotted this year and uh, I'm very happy with it. So we have to make sure my video where I was explaining we're going shopping and we're going to make sure we come home with good quality. And this one flower shop, they had two old ones, I have to admit, and they were white and I just put my finger on the top where the moss is. It was just like the water almost splashed out as my finger went down. I thought, oh no, you know. So yes, the thing we want to remember this year is we love an orchid and we can fall for one because it's so beautiful, but we're checking it out as thoroughly as we possibly can because that is the biggest secret. Because uh, if you're just uh, an average person at home, which I am, who started the love for orchids and we're not getting into it commercially and we're not growing uh, any special species, not that I don't have a few and we'll probably get a few more, but just keeping it to what I can easily look after, still take holidays for a couple of weeks, not have to worry. They're very hardy, hardy orchids when they are in an environment that suits where you live. And the bark has so worked for me, it's easy to maintain. And the secret is the patience. Once you have repotted, and um, it doesn't really matter, when I first started I was buying Schultz and uh, miracle Grow potting mix for orchids, and mine did fine. Some of the original ones, like Moon Glow, which is in bloom, just coming into bloom. And the purple one, which I haven't named, which I will name, <laughs> maybe not after Jimi Hendrix, uh, Purple Haze, I already used that one, but we'll think of a name uh, shortly. 
So anyway, that is going to be your most important thing to try and pick a healthy one. Because as you've seen in the past year, when I repot an orchid, I will do it the minute I get it home, I set it there, I take it out the pot, I just stick it in a pot with air holes until 24 hours have passed and I've soaked my bark and my charcoal that I'm going to put in. Now, uh, 24 hours later, full bloom. If I, don't, if I do it right away and those roots in the center, they always look good on the edge of the pot, but the ones in the center, if we do it right away, will save having that problem, hopefully. Now, I've still had uh, uh, shocks because sometimes when you go down, you could find the black rot and uh, you could find other problems. So we want to do it as soon as possible, in bloom, as soon as possible, so that we are ensuring a healthier transplant. Now then, it's in your bark, you've trimmed off the rotten pieces and anything that felt soft or gooey, you're down to firmness. Now the ones where I've had to take literally, literally next to nothing off are the ones that have always uh, done the best. If you start to get a real shock, you get a uh, flower drop, bud drop, uh, floppy leaves. So once it's in your pot, and hopefully you found one with aerial roots, even an active aerial root where it's nice and green on the tip once you've sprayed it. Then put it in a humid uh, position, and I like to, uh, let's see if I can do this here. I like to use, I have a special misting bowl <laughs> on my counter. Yes, there goes the water. And uh, I have a shelf. I usually just put a um, upside down saucer and over the stand. And then that is where I put my orchid so that uh, this is the one I made out of a chandelier uh, saucer sits on that. And the little tea light in the center is where I put the Mr. Fogger. Now, you can make these stands out of anything. Anything that's the same size and I silicone glued it to a tea light that's big enough to hold your Mr. Fogger. Then you can take your saucer and you can put it on top and you have a nice, nice nursing station. And that's where I like to put my newly repotted orchid and I, I, uh, it's already going into moist bark. It's been washed, it's been cleaned, and then I will not water it for, I usually water once a week, even in the winter. <clears throat> in the summer it's probably twice a week. So then it will sit on that misting station for two weeks. I will not water it. I will mist it, and what it's letting do, like if you have a, a sore, on your finger or somewhere and you're always in the dishwasher washing dishes in the sink and it's not drying it's not healing so what we want now we put that we give them their moist and green, uh, environment but then we're going to let it dry for two weeks and we're going to let everything heal and but we're misting and it's in a mist situation over the bowl and we're misting and uh, Two weeks later, and I mark it on my calendar, I always do, so that I remember um, what to do. I think I could almost go, so I'm always making a mess when I do this. <laughs> and Maggie's being good, it's a New Year's, and she's got a New Year's resolution. She will not bark. Okay, so here we go. That is important. We've repotted it and we've got it in its position. And these are things we've learned past years, but a reminder from this year of uh, what we should do. So then we be patient. And it's, put it somewhere near your sink, if you don't have a misting bowl, somewhere where you can see it. 
you can just have a little misting bottle handy. I've always got my, uh, I take the miracle Grow 222 fertilizer bottles and I take the, the, the paper off the outside and I use these for just water. And I like them, they're small, they're easy to handle. And every morning uh, we sit here, we have breakfast. And after breakfast, I usually mist everything. So that is what we've learned. Once you've repotted, be patient. There are so many ways to grow orchids out there. But if you just want to have them in your home and something to beautify the dark days of winter, um, I'm not... Uh, I'm just trying to explain what works in the home easily, without special circumstances, without uh, special rooms and, and special programs, just something simple that I have proved since uh, around 2012 or something like that. I have proved works for me in the home. So, uh, all across Canada, it's freezing cold. We've been shoveling and there's snow and the days are darker. It's, it, I, I've always used the west window because when we do have light, it's the brightest. Now, Jack, this year, he put the LED strip light that I talked about in the other video and uh, we have ordered a strip for the other window um, because they have done fine without it. But I have found that uh, I have been noticing uh, new growth. The bark mulch has finally taken off. And so I think this extra bit of light because it's the length of the light. Uh, our light, when we do get it in this window, is good, but uh, I see new growth on this. And this is the one, it came on a little uh, Brillo pad um, that I had to slowly pick off. It was very, and it was not looking good, and there was rotten roots in there. But since the light, I've noticed, I've noticed new growth. So I think it's doing good. And I've had four or five blooms on um, uh, this one here, Heratoretricalis or something like that. As I say, I'm not a species person, but I can look it up for you. So there's lots of new growth coming. And this is just, just since the lights. So, you know, I've been patient with this because, um, uh, bark, it's a lot more work in the home, and so I have to put that under the sink a lot. And uh, But everything is enjoying this window, and uh, I have to show you Mungo. This is one of my oldest orchids, and it's the one with the kaiki. But she is coming into bloom beautifully. Yeah. There's the kaiki spike and the mother spike. And uh, I gotta get her in a pot when this is done, the baby. I think the mom's hot. This poor thing, I repotted it <laughs> twice this last year. And uh, I didn't like the pot I put it in. I like this pot. There's the other thing when you're looking for a pot. It's also important. Um, I have found the more holes the better. That's what I found. And therefore, a lot of people say, oh, you put so much water all over your orchids, don't they get rot? Well, and there's a beautiful little one here. So, um, I always water down my orchids good. We are surrounded by mountains and we hugely, and there's seldom water restrictions. Last year it didn't 
uh, rain all summer and we still had lots of water. So I know some people, if you live somewhere, you have to have a different system of watering, like a bucket of water, you dip them in or whatever. And some of mine, if they're small, I will just leave them sit in the sink for no more than a couple minutes. But most of the time I just walk, run the water through. And because I have lots of air holes, that water is not sitting on the surface near the crown of the plant. And it's draining through right away. And it's only leaving bits of moisture on little tiny spots as it goes through. So that is it for the week. I am not watering them again. That is it in the winter here once a week and if I miss because I'm busy and if it has to go two weeks it's fine but I prefer one week and all my pots whether we've made them ourselves like uh, um, this one's getting a new leaf but Jack drilled the half inch hole in this it was a lamp he cut a slice off the top and uh, I love it and it has it's clay and it has uh, the half inch holes with the diamond drill bit that he also used on our misting bowls. So, uh, there. Now, the, the one thing I should say before I go, the, the orchid that had the black rot and I treated and everything, well, I decided to throw it out. It was just turning black everywhere. And even though, though I cut the bottom off, the, the ones that were coming out were all black. I said, I don't want those spores in the house, so I threw that out. And there was the lesson, because if in the store I had dug into that moss a little bit, I would have seen that. So if you're checking and you see black, around an aerial root where there's lots of it or the stem is black then you're digging into that moss and you don't know how long it's been there so this is why the first thing we want to remember this year on our hunt is a healthy plant to begin with now the one of the species i ordered online Early in the spring, and because of the freezing mail, I think it was, uh, uh, I'm just guessing back to maybe May that I actually got it. It could have been April, but I'm thinking it was, and it is Fell Memorial. This is my first, like, uh, species for a fell. Now, um, there's, it, they came in bark. Very tiny bark. I was so pleased. I even put, when I repotted it, this is the tiny little bark it came in because it was so tiny. And then I also repotted it into this pot and I put a little bit of the tiny bark that came with it in with my fur bark. And uh, you can see very healthy roots. Uh, there's another one coming down in here and uh, inside. So uh, it came in bark. I liked that. And uh, it's got the finer leaves. So it can take a little bit more sunlight than the orchids with the wide leaves. If you have a wide leaf orchid, it more than likely wants to be away from the window a little more once the heat starts coming and the light starts coming. But right now, everything goes in my window and it stays there until I notice there's a hop coming in this window and then I'll back them off to tables before they go out to the patio. So that's what I do. And, uh, oh, I sort of have a new kind of resolution for this channel. And I'm always doing some something. <laughs> so, at the end of each video, I might have a different project I'm working on or something I want to talk about. And we're starting today, and just on ending that, um, I'm going to add something different on the end of each video. So... I had picked up this frame um, 
years ago and stuck it in my little room where I, eh, you wouldn't want to see in there. But anyway, I, I knew I wanted to do uh, something with it because I liked it. You know me, I like a little bit of glitz. So, um, so I was looking online and uh, they have, uh, they, I don't know how long they've been doing it because I've never done it before, but you can take a picture from a magazine. If it's a real old magazine, you can use it how it is. If it's a new magazine, any picture, a photo of your dog, of your family, uh, anything, and it's, if you wanted to Google it, it's called transferring uh, with laser printer. So you can take a book, you've got a nice picture in, you can turn it upside down, print the picture. Then you take a tile like this. Uh, this is the back of my tile, but I did it with the front, and I hadn't done it before. And then I, you can paint Elmer's glue, or I used uh, gesso, and put it on your the front of your your print, and you put it on your tile, and you stick it on, and you pat it really good, smooth it all out, get the wrinkles out. And uh, and then comes the very job. You get a cup of coffee. You sit at your table with your misting thing, and you slowly rub all the paper off. And the print, whether it's a photo of your family, of your dog, you want to send somebody a picture of, it comes on to the tile. All the paper comes off. Very very long process. <laughs> And uh, anyway, so I did it, and there was a few spots that I had rubbed through. So, um, you know, maybe practice makes perfect, but I still had the basis of a picture of an owl. Now, I like painting, and I've never done this before. And I thought, well, it'll give me the size of the owl and what I want. So this was a picture in an old magazine of an owl sticking his head out of a... Uh, hole in the log. So I'm not quite finished it. I've got to work on the bottom a little more. But so I started painting. <laughs> Here's my owl. And when he's finished, he'll go in that frame. But it's something different to play with and have fun with. And uh, you can use cheap dollar paint and you can play with it. And he'll go in this frame when I'm finished. Like so. And uh, anyway, I'm going to share with you something that's going on around here. And hopefully, I'm working on Jack, that when our strip lighting comes for the other window, that I can get him showing how he's installing it and what he did electrically. Because uh, it's not only being a great thing for the plants, when we sit here and have coffee, I, I swear it's brightening up our life. So uh, I'll end with that and I'll see you again this year. And I hope you're having a happy new year. Okay.